What's up, guys? Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is Bull Season 2, Episode 13, Kill Shot. So this one was a pretty typical Bull episode. You know, there were things about I enjoyed, some things about it were pretty obvious to me. Uh, but overall, it was enjoyable enough. So let's talk about it. First of all, the case surrounding this one is pretty straightforward as far as Bull goes. Uh, we've got a very rich guy ends up getting killed. Guy comes in, it seems like it's a burglary, and he shoots him straight in the head dead instantly uh, and it the scene is staged to make it look like a burglary but the the cops just don't believe it they're just like no there's no way it's a burglary and so the wife ends up getting suspected um, and so through most of this episode it's just kind of like we know she didn't do it but there's a part of me that's like well what if she's the one that hired the guy to kill him would they be able to prove that you know is maybe there's something else going on here uh, but ultimately what we find out is apparently the guy was very bad into gambling and lost a lot of the money. And so to sort of help his wife and his daughter succeed financially, uh, there was a life insurance policy on him for $25 million. And so he put out a hit on himself to have the guy come and kill him. And then that would be able to give them the money because they wouldn't get it if it was suicide. So, yeah, I mean, that part of it was kind of a surprise. I didn't really think that was a possibility, but once it happened, I was like, oh, wow, that's actually, that's a little bit different. That's something I haven't normally seen before. Uh, but the rest of, I don't know, the rest of the episode was just kind of typical. Uh, there are moments where I'm just like, you know, I, I enjoy certain things whenever Bull is talking about it, you know, talking about the different... Uh, like the different trial parts, the different aspects of the psychology uh, involved in the show. I mean, because like one of my favorite scenes, for instance, is when he's talking to the lawyer and he's just like, you know, I have a very good talent of being able to tell when I'm being lied to. And I just smell it all over this case. That none of what they're saying, I'm not, I'm not hearing the truth or enough of it. And I don't know, it just, it sort of fits in with his character so well. And I do enjoy scenes like that where, that does come out and he's just like I know when I'm being lied to I can see it I I can read people's emotions on their faces and so, so you're trying to tell me oh this is all true but I can see clearly it's not whenever he has those blunt moments it's very enjoyable but then he has some moments where I just kind of question the morals behind it you know there's some moments where it feels like oh the truth is what's important and then there's some moments where he's just like oh money that's what's important <laughs> Because like at the beginning of this episode, you know, talking about is he going to represent or is he not? And he's just like, I don't know about this. But then ultimately he goes to the team. He's like, yep, rich person hired us and we're going to do it because that's – we need the money. So I am kind of back and forth as far as Bull is concerned. I feel like sometimes they get his character spot on. Sometimes they don't really get it right. Uh, but aside from that, there are some other things going on just behind the scenes Uh one of the things going on that's sort of outside of the case is we see Chunk, he's taken that class uh, to become a lawyer. Uh, so I don't even know what it's called. It's not lawyer school. It's something else. It's like law school, I think. So he's taken this class, and apparently he gets a C, and he has been. He read it, and he's just like, you know, it's good, isn't it? He's just like, yeah. He's like, I got a C on it. I don't understand. I feel like this this professor just doesn't like me at all. And so he finally goes and confronts his professor at the end of it, which there was a scene where he's talking to the daughter of the guy who died and she's talking about how she's never really able to face the people. Uh, her mother's not able to face the people who are who don't like her because they just they hear about her and then they hate her and she's not able to sort of face up to them and just ask them why. It's just that's how it is whenever you're famous and rich. And so, of course, that fits perfectly with, within what Chunk's going through and his professor. And I'm just like, what a coincidence that this all just happens to work out like that. But ultimately, he goes to talk to the guy at the end of the episode, and the guy doesn't like him because he's working for Bull. And here's the thing. I understand there's pre prejudice in the world. I get that entirely. But it just feels like I don't see a whole lot of professors at colleges and universities. I don't see a lot of professors doing stuff like this. You know, seeing a student and they're just like, Psh, I don't like that student. I'm just going to give him a bunch of C's. And it's, it's nothing to do with Chunk himself. It's about where he's working now. And I, here's the thing. He has this prejudice against 
bull in what he does, the psychology of trials and all of that. He hates that. Okay, I get it. But if he sees something different in Chunk, that means he should realize, oh, he actually does want to learn the law, which means it fits more in line with what he believes, which is you don't need all that psychology crap. And so it feels like he would take this moment to show him up and be like, okay, see, look, you're, you do need the, the law stuff. Your psychology doesn't always work. But instead, he takes an opportunity to just be like, oh, because you work for a psychology firm, I'm just going to give you C's all the time. Don't care if you're actually smart. Don't care if you're actually learning anything about the law. I'm just going to give you C's. So enjoy it. It just feels, it feels very close-minded, first of all. And also, it just feels like it wastes an opportunity for him to show one of these ruffians that he thinks are, oh, they think they're above everything. It, it just ruins a chance for him to do something about it. And so I feel like his motivations aren't quite captured correctly. You know, it's, it's almost like they just sort of said, oh, we just need Chunk to have something to go through while he's going to this law school. So let's have a professor that just hates him and what he does and is just going to keep giving him C's no matter what without actually thinking about the reasoning why the professor's giving him C's. You know, I, I just, I feel like it actually would have made more sense if the professor actually didn't get along with him for some reason rather than just, oh, he works for this place and I don't like that, so... I'm going to just give him C's. It doesn't really fit. You know, it, a smart person would look at this and say, all right, well, now you're just being stupid because you're showing yourself to be closed-minded and pretty much proving all these people that you hate right because you're stuck in this old that way of thinking and you're not trying to, you know, show your way. You're just like, ah, eh, my way is right, and I don't care if you know if my way is right. I'm just going to pretty much fail you. So... I, I don't know. This It kind of feels like a little bit of a detour, and it feels like even on this detour, things aren't running smoothly. But overall, I mean, the case itself was interesting enough. The one thing I will say, just by looking on IMDb to look up the, the title of this episode, I was shocked to look and find that this all of the episodes are 5.0 or below. Like, kind of ridiculous. Like, I... I'll, I'll go look it up to see again. Okay, so, yeah, the first season, the highest it got was a 6.0 for the fourth episode. The highest it's got this season, a 5.2 for the first episode. Here's the thing. Don't get me wrong. I can understand why it's not being rated extremely high. You know, it, it, this is a type of show that does fit more my preference, so I do understand why I probably enjoy it more than others. But it's not bad enough to be rated below 5. I mean, most of these, if not, like, let's see. I'd say half of the first season and then all but one episode so far of this season has been rated below a 5.0. And here's the problem I have with that. If other people don't like it, that's fine. But <laughs> a show like Supergirl, where the writing is god-awful, a show like... What's another one? Bones. The last couple seasons of Bones where it was just terrible. Even that was still getting like a 7.0 and higher. And so to look at this show, which isn't necessarily great, but it's not bad either. The writing can be okay. It can be enjoyable at times. Like even in some of its worst episodes, I, I feel like, yeah, maybe a 5.0. I never think below a 5.0. And it just kind of shows that some of some of these shows can be a little bit hated upon based on, you know, the, I guess the fan base surrounding it. If there's not enough support for it, if there's not enough like, oh, we got to pander to the audience, it's not going to get rated high enough. And I hate that. I hate the fact that that's kind of what our society has become is like this, oh, we got to pander to the audience. Oh, we got to have, you know, we got to stand for something. We got to be politically correct. We got to do all this stuff so we can get high ratings. Why not just tell a good story? You know, that would be more interesting to me, but Either way, that's it for this episode, so see you guys in the next one. And now on to episode 14, Keep Your Friends Close. I don't know if there's some sort of like connection with the fact that NCIS's 14th episode was also called Keep Your Friends Close, but anyway, um, this one, kind of like the 14th episode of NCIS, is more interesting than the 13th episode was in that it is the last episode right before a little bit of a break and then it comes back. I think next week. So, yeah, this one did have some more interesting twists and turns, but in the end, 
I still find some faults with it, and let's just talk about it. So we see air traffic control is dealing with some sort of malfunction. Planes are about to crash. They don't really know what's going on. They're trying to fix it. Uh, they manage to like divert course just in the nick of time and avoid any sort of collisions. And so they find a hacker that did it named Malcolm, and he goes to trial. The government is convinced he's guilty. Uh, his girlfriend, who is apparently a friend of Cable's, is convinced he's innocent. And so <clears throat> tries to enlist Cable's help. Turns out she's actually playing Cable, gets Cable to insert a drive that erases any sort of evidence uh, against Malcolm. And so, yeah, it just goes from there. Uh, Bull ends up finding a way to sort of find a way around it uh, by finding a different or figuring out what it was that Malcolm did, figuring out his his purpose for doing it all. And so they did find evidence to get him put back in jail. And because of that, uh, the district attorney that was going to convict Cable for the rest of her life, he does find it in his heart to get her out of jail. And as they're in the car, honestly, this is one of the best parts about this episode to me. As they're in the car, I'm sitting there thinking, really? This is how it's going to end. You know, we're just going to, oh, you broke the law. You did all this horrible stuff. But you're just, everything works out okay. You know, you get out of jail, you just, everything's fine. Well, as, you know, Cable's like, I just want to say, I really appreciate what you did for me. And Bull's like, I appreciate everything you've done for me. And she's just like, wait, are you being facetious? Because a compliment is not something that she's used to from him. But he's like, no, I'm trying to be professional. And so that way, you know, I, I'm trying to find a way to tell you you're not working at TAC anymore. And honestly, best part of the episode because it finally shows there is some weight. You know, there is some weight to the decisions made. I've talked about this show in the past. There have been a couple episodes where somebody does something and it's, you know, it's not something good. There have been a couple episodes where they've been defending somebody who is guilty, but they're trying to find a way to sort of help them out uh, because they're doing it for a noble cause or something like that. And... The problem that I do have with some of those episodes is sometimes it feels like, oh, well, there's no consequence for doing something wrong. Well, in this episode, we clearly see there is a consequence. You know, you did something wrong. Yes, you did it under the <laughs> noble pretenses, but it's still something that's wrong. You broke the law. You snuck in a chip that you should not be sneaking in, and you lied to everybody about it. You didn't tell anybody. Yeah, you did something horribly wrong. Now, they're going to help you out. They're going to keep you out of jail. That's their way of being your friend. But at the same time, they can't trust you on the team anymore because you did something stupid. And the only thing I don't like about it at the end is that Cable's reaction, in my opinion, is just a little too much. I think you look at it and you got to understand there is consequences. Now, yes, she is young, so maybe they'll kind of look at it and say, well, she's just young and doesn't really understand, and maybe this will help her understand the consequences of her actions. Um... But I, in my opinion, it would have been better if she had just been sort of upset, but acceptive. But she just like tells the driver to pull over and then she like storms out of the car, slams her fist against the fence and she's all pissed off at Bull. And I'm just like, he's doing what's best for you. You know, it, he could have just left you in jail. He actually got you out of jail. You're welcome. Making sure or firing you at TAC, making sure that you can't do this again. That's his way of protecting you. That's his way of showing you the mistakes of your actions and showing you that there are consequences when you do something wrong. So in my opinion, that is one problem I do have, but it's more a character decision problem than it is like a writing problem. I think they wanted her to act this way um, because, you know, like I said, she is young and she's kind of naive too. So, uh, but I will say the other thing that I guess sort of bothers me in this episode is for uh, an episode entitled Keep Your Friends Close, it kind of shows twice, not just once with Cable's friend, but also with Danny's friend in the FBI, or former lover in the FBI, that you can't trust people, <laughs> and you're not supposed to keep them close. Um, because, you know, first of all, Cable, she does what her friend asked her to do. She tries to help her out because she's pregnant with his baby and all this stuff. And honestly, I want to find out if that was even true, if that was just something she came up with. I mean, why would she lie to Malcolm about it when they were lying in bed? But... I don't know, it just seems like maybe something she did come up with to sort of make Malcolm's story a little bit more believable, maybe a bit more sympathetic. Um, but, you know, she trusts her and gets betrayed because all a friend wanted to do was just erase all the evidence against her, her boyfriend. 
And then Danny goes to a friend in the FBI and is just like, look, I need your help on this. I need your favor, or I need a favor from you. Trying to sort of get, I guess, cable stuff. I, I don't really know what they were trying to do. It felt like maybe they were trying to get in touch with the FBI and maybe see if they could keep cable's involvement under the rug so they didn't have to uh, you know, cause it to be a mistrial. But then he just marches in with the FBI and arrests Cable right on the spot. He's like, I'm doing it to protect you, Danny. And just like, what? <laughs> no, that's not what she wanted you to do at all. Like, that completely goes, I don't know. It just seemed weird to me that an, an episode entitled Keep Your Friends Close showed why you should not keep your friends as close and not trust your friends. Um, but aside from that, you know, the case itself, I wish they had done something a bit different with it instead of making it all about Cable and you know, her friend betraying her and erasing it and causing a mistrial. I kind of wanted it to be something a little bit more interesting as far as maybe this kid is so good at manipulating the truth, maybe Bull ends up representing him, or maybe he does believe his story, and so they kind of find a way to, you know, get the trial thrown out, uh, trying to help the guy, but then turns out, oh no, he's actually the bad guy after all type of thing. I don't know, I wanted to see something a bit different. And instead, what I got was kind of, you know, a, a story all based around Cable. And not that Cable's not a bad character or anything, but it just felt like it took away from the rest of the trial and what they were doing at the trial. And for a show that's based around trial science, and that is kind of the foundation of the show, it kind of felt like they pushed that off to the side. Yes, they explained the whole mistrial with uh, pre prejudice type of thing. But in my opinion, it would have been more interesting to sort of see the trial and see what kind of twists and turns it can take with this guy who apparently hacked into a computer and maybe it was maybe it's a difficult case where they have to try to convince the jury of what he did and uh, where you know it's a lot of technological stuff going on but it's difficult for people to understand that and so you have to get it explained in a certain way and they have to believe a narrative that they create about the technology and show a different way of thinking about it so they can understand it but Instead, it just turns into, oh, this case is so easy, everything feels fine, and then halfway through the episode, oh crap, Cable, you ruined everything. So, there were parts of it that were very enjoyable, and I still, going back to what I said earlier, I still feel like there's no way the show deserves all these lower ratings than 5.0 compared to some of these other shows that are just god-awful. There's still some enjoyable parts about it. You know, a lot of the characters are fun to watch. Um... And, you know, even though I don't necessarily get in line with what Cable did, I still like her as a character. I still think she can be very interesting as a character. I just feel like they took her in a direction in this episode that kind of lessened her impact. You know, made her more of a, a typical young, naive character instead of maybe making her somebody above the rest. You know, and that's where I, I feel like they could have handled that last scene a little bit differently and made her accepted of what happened but just like look I need some time alone this is too much instead of just making her the oh look at her just that stereotypical millennial you know she just doesn't understand what's going on she's going to slam her fist and get all pissed off even though it's what's best for her I I've seen that a hundred times before I wanted to see something different here and I saw the same thing again so that's it for me though for these two episodes so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below what were your thoughts on these two let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff Leave a like and subscribe for your bull reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.